Greetings fellow descendants, my name is Lars. Today I want to go over a build that can help you beat hard mode intercept bosses, specifically the first three, Executioner, Dead Bride, and Devourer. I decided to make this video because I've met a couple of people while playing, as well as I've seen a couple of comments on some of the videos stating that there is some issue with beating hard mode bosses. And I know a lot of the guides out there give you a lot of good information on all these ultimate weapons and all these really fully itemized, really swell, optimized builds on how to do stuff. And that's great. But not everybody's there yet. Not everybody has all the stuff or even has the time to acquire all of that up to this point. Some people even just started playing. Maybe they aren't ready for that yet. So today I'm going to present you with a build that requires no crystallization catalysts, no energy accelerators. You're just going to require some gold and kuiper in order to upgrade your mods. And you don't even need any ultimate weapons, ultimate descendants. You can do it with any character, any character in the game at all. So let's go ahead and get into the build. So I decided to pick Bunny as the character I'll be using since everyone can acquire Bunny and everyone should just have a Bunny because she's the first character you're offered in the game that's easy to farm out outside of the three starters. You know, you get one of your three starters and then you get bunny like bunny is the first character you can really craft that's very easy to acquire and set up so we're going to do bunny on this so for the modules for bunny you're going to need a sub attack module anyone works but i went with the shock punch it just needs to be there so that you can get to the bonus 10 capacity out of it you don't need anything else then we have increased hp to boost our hp value as well as increased defense to increase our defense value and battle of stamina to also increase our hp value more uh, the skill duration is not necessary uh, in fact, if you wanted to, you can also use the HP amplification for even more HP gain. That is also an option. But Battle of Stamina, you, you might run into faster and easier. Any which way, you could equip either one, and it works out just fine. You just want the extra HP value. So if you want the more from the HP amplification, go for it. If you have Battle of Stamina and you've already leveled it, because I know Battle of Stamina is used in a few more builds, it's generally a more used mod right now, you could level this up and not regret using your Golden Kyber on it. Um, aside from that, we don't need any other mod uh, except for you're going to need a couple of mods for specific fights. You're going to need Absolute Curse to uh, remove the defensive buff from the Executioner fight. We'll talk about that later when we get to the fight. And as long as you're Mastery Rank 12, you should have enough points to be able to equip all these mods plus an eight cost Absolute Curse for 56 total capacity. So no energy accelerated needed, but you will need to probably put in some points to Absolute Curse so it, can, uh, it goes down from 14 to eight if you put six points in it. If you do have an Almondine slot, you can slot this without needing to invest any points into it. So if your character has an Almondine slot, you don't need to level this up at all. But leveling it up to 6 only costs about 300,000 gold and about 30,000 Kuiper. So it's not as big of an investment as fully maxing out some other mods. So that is your option. For every other fight, we do not need this. If you want for a Devourer, another mod that is good is Perfect Anti-Venom. This will give you poison immunity so that anytime his uh, poison stuff hits you, it will not, his toxin stuff hits you, you will not get poisoned. And that will reduce your overall damage that you're taking. That's also good. Uh, but also if you have the slots for it, like Bunny does, you can equip your uh, Specialist mod. So her Electric Specialist can be equipped for the other fights to give you some more damage. You don't need this, but it is an option if you have the uh, one of the slots already there. I haven't added any to this character. It's just the these were just there at base. These are were there at the base. So um, that is all for Bunny. I will show you where to farm these mods, uh, specifically the gold ones, uh, after I go over the weapon. But first, in order to make use of all this HP and defense, we have to talk about the external components. So for external components, we have uh, four different types that you can utilize. You, I have all gold here. You can get by with a mix of gold and purples. You're just going to be a little bit less HP, but we've got plenty of HP. You just need to get yourself set up with 
these specific main and sub stats for each component in order to maximize your stat values. So for your auxiliary, you're going to want HP main, HP sub, and fire resistance sub. You won't be fighting any fire enemies here in these first three fights, but you will if you go into Pyromaniac. This will just be helpful then. For your uh, sensor, you're going to want HP main with your chill resistance sub and then any other sub stat that you want as your secondary. There's no HP or defense on this one for substats, so you can just get whatever you want as a value there. For your memory, you're going to want defense main, defense sub, and you want uh, electric resistance sub, and that'll get you all of your defense value that you're going to need. And then for your process, you're going to want HP main with toxin resistance substat with your secondary substat being whatever it is you can get your hands on. If you do all that, you're going to have plenty of base resistances for the elements. You're going to have decent defense for your mod to boost from and you're going to have great amount of hp for your mods to boost from and you're going to get a lot of hp and defense value to help you survive in these boss fights pretty easily for your reactor just make sure you get one that matches with your character's type optimally if you can get one with the secondary that fits with their type whether it's singular dimension fusion or tech make sure you just get as much as you can out of that and the substats on it aren't really that important we're not really aiming for much damage from our descendant itself it's just any extra damage we can get is great make sure you do a purple not a gold one for your reactor because we're utilizing purple weapons and not uh, ultimate weapons so you will not be able to gain the 60 percent boost off of a gold reactor so so just take the 40% boost off of a purple and you should be fine. When it comes to farming your external components, if you don't already know about this, you can go ahead and go to your map at the bottom here where it says difficulty level rewards. You can click on that or you can press the associated button and this will bring you to a page where you can see all of the reactor spots as well as what types for this week. As you can see up here at the top, it says six days, 13 hours remaining until next reward rotation. This will let you farm out any specific gold reactors that you want for specific types, such as like, such as this one where you can farm chill special round tech from any mission in the Ironworks map. Any enemies can drop the chill special round tech gold reactors there, but you can also farm yourself external components. For this week, we have sensors located in Remnant, which is a um, Agna Desert map. So any of these missions here. Any enemies you kill here can drop uh, some sensors. Auxiliary power can be dropped from the abandoned zone in Echo Swamp. And if you need to sort of see when like other pieces might come, like if you're missing your memory or your processor, you can click in, in the bottom right hand corner, you see the all rewards, click that button, and it'll bring up the next schedule for the following three weeks. And you can see exactly what kind of reactors, as well as what kind of, uh, you can see the memory, and processor will be coming next week and the following week auxiliary power and sensor will be on the following week so you can see exactly what you want to farm and when you want to farm it and go after those specifically so let us go ahead and talk about the weapons so we're going to be utilizing the eternal willpower as our primary weapon it has really good base firearm attack as well as really decent firearm crit rate. So we're going to go ahead and build with that in mind. As you can see, my substats here on it are firearm attack, firearm crit damage and gold, firearm crit rate and recoil. So you want to aim for firearm attack and firearm crit damage in gold. Uh, you don't need both, but at least one of them in gold as well as the other one in at least purple along with firearm crit rate in purple and then your third and then your fourth a substat can be attack damage versus colossus weak point or recoil recoil is going to offset one of the mods so it's not going to be as detrimental to you so it's a perfectly fine to have but if you're fine with the 20 percent recoil that we're going to have then weak point damage or attack from the colossus any of them will work you do not need to worry so much about that one just get one that benefits you and avoid any of the element um ones for now because we're not building for element and the element will just make a little bit better against some bosses and then have no value against some others. So it's just let's aim for one that at least gives all value to all the fights as the best we can. So let's take a look at the mods. So we're going to be using action reaction for the 61% firearm attack buff. And it does come with a recoil of plus 20%. It's not a bad amount. We can perfectly work around it. 
but if you get recoil as one of the substats for your eternal willpower it will reduce it and it will be a little helpful uh, we also have better concentration for fire and crit damage boost this comboed with our substat one will give us a lot of extra fire and crit damage so the base crit rate's already high enough to where we're going to crit semi-regularly it's not going to be perfect but it's going to be okay and then we have fire rate up for additional 25 percent fire rate yes we have a small clip on this but we do manage to put out a decent amount of damage by just shooting and reloading and just just getting it through the fire rate up was better overall for that i found for the mods here especially considering it only costs you 12 points instead of 16 which means it can fit into your build if you are mastery level 12 if you're mastery if you're not mastery level 12 you have to get all the way like mastery level 14 in order to slot something like another rifling reinforcement so this one goes in well with the mastery um, limit that i kind of set on myself too and uh it's really also very helpful against the devourer fight when you have to break open their healing orbs it helps you burn through them faster so fire rate up is good and if you do end up having an energy activator to use you can equip it and you can slot in additionally a rifling reinforcement and and a better insight if you have the room for both of these and if you don't have the room for like the full better insight you can maybe just get it up to like level eight get some value out of it and doing so you will end up with uh, a good chunk of extra damage output but for if you don't have them it's fine if you don't have an energy activator to use it's fine you don't need it you can do the first three bosses without it it's just going to be easier if you have that extra boost and remember this is a low investment build to let you do the fights so that you can get stronger and be able to beat them faster later. Additionally, we are going to also be running a handgun. Doesn't matter which handgun, but it has to be a handgun general round, not hand cannon. We want a handgun, and the handgun is going to have expanded general magazine, which gives you max general rounds plus 50%, but essentially, Without this, you're going to cap out at like 400 general ammo. Uh, when you switch this while you're at cap, you can pick up an extra 200, and that can then be used by your eternal willpower. Combo that with the normal round impact, normal impact rounds refining mod, and what you can do is for every 0.25 of an impact round you find, you're going to get one general round from this. This converts to about 316 or so, 320-ish ammo from impact from one impact clip to your general rounds. So... If the bosses aren't dropping your general rounds, make sure you switch to your handgun to pick up the ammo. You can get about 300 extra bullets really quickly from one impact round clip dropping, and that will help you out. So you just need these equipped to this. Even if you don't have enough gold and kuiper to max these, get them as high as you can. Um, the normal impact rounds refining should be very easy to max, so it only costs you three. This will help you eliminate your ammo problems. Absolutely eliminate. So make sure you have this equipped so you can get rid of your ammo issues. Your third weapon does not matter. I just equipped a sniper rifle. It does not matter. You can utilize this to make sure you can equip whatever condition is required for your re your reactor. So if your reactor requires a, uh, a launcher equipped, you can equip a launcher to your third slot. If it requires a shotgun, equip a shotgun. If it requires like a scout rifle, equip a scout rifle, whatever you need. Just equip it, and that way, you, that way you don't have to sit there farming extra reactors forever. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into where to farm the weapons and mods you're going to need for this build. So when it comes to the Eternal Willpower, the best place i found to farm this is the uh, Storage Outpost here in Agna Desert, in the Storage Zone. The reason why this is is because while this can give you the Eternal Willpower, it can also give you uh, amorphous materials that you can crack open here at this Abyssal Void Fusion Reactor, which can award you with the perfect Anti-Venom mod. So this is a way to kill two birds, one stone. You can farm for your Eternal Willpowers, and then you can also try to get your perfect Anti-Venom. Even if you don't necessarily want to spend the time farming that, um, it's good to get it eventually later for Swamp Walker and Obstructor intercept fights. Those will, you'll benefit a lot more from having the perfect Anti-Venom mod. But if you don't want to worry about farming that for now, and you don't really want to farm this outpost, you can also go ahead and farm the Mountaintops uh, Outpost in White Knight Gulch. This will give you a chance at Eternal Willpower as well. And both of these are Commando Outposts. You will have to fight a, uh, a boss with multiple health bars and an orb immunity phase. If you don't feel like you're strong enough for that or don't want to do that, even though they are relatively easy to do and you will have multiple lives to do it, if you don't want to do that, that's fine. You can also go to Agna Desert for a million wastes and farm the baggage transport base mission. This also has a chance to give you the eternal willpower. So you can go ahead and do that. 
uh, be forewarned, you should be doing any and all of these on hard mode. If you do them on normal mode, then when you get the weapon, it'll be like level 50 or 60 and not level 100. And you're going to have to just reroll all of the stats at that point anyway, after you've leveled the weapon to 100. If you already have an eternal willpower, you have to level it to 100 first before you start rolling your stats. Otherwise, you're going to end up with level 50 or 60 stats, re-rolling constantly. Then you level it to 100 and you are going to have a weaker gun. So don't do that. Make sure you have either a level 100 that you farmed or you have one level it to 100 before you start rolling your stats. So once you have your eternal willpower, you're going to come over here. You're going to do weapon readjustment on your eternal willpower and you can just pick and choose the options you want to keep like this. I want to keep these. Maybe I want to get rid of the recoil and you can just readjust. You're going to need the adjustment control access standard. So make sure you uh, craft as many of these as you can. You get all of the materials to make these from breaking down um, standard and rare uh, weapons. So make sure you just break down unnecessary weapons whenever you need to. And then you just readjust and you just keep readjusting until you get a desired um, stat line like this bonus fire attack versus Colossus. So now we've got more damage versus a Colossus. We've got Firearm Attack, Firearm Crit Rate, and Firearm Crit Damage. So this will be a very good setup for us to be able to take on the bosses. There is one more mod that you need to farm, and you need this mod to be able to fight the Executioner. Otherwise, it's going to be cutting it very close, or you may not be able to beat him at all. And so you're going to need to go ahead and go to Agios, Starfall Road, and you're going to farm this mission here, the Ruins Guard Facility, for the Absolute Curse mod has a 5% drop rate from completing the mission. You can do this on normal or hard. I recommend doing it on hard for the extra um, for the extra stuff you can get for it, but it is very easy mission to do in general. It's just fighting some enemies and you'll be able to get this done quite easily. And that's all you need to do is farm until you get absolute curse and then go level it up until it costs eight. So it's only level, you only need to level it to six. That way you can slot it in the build and you can take on the executioner. So with all that, we're going to go ahead and jump right in and start fighting the Executioner. Okay, so whenever you're fighting any intercept boss, you should be using your Echo, which is your scan ability. You're going to either press the right thumbstick on a controller, or you're going to press tab for your keyboard. And this will give you this little display. The important thing is the Echive will display the boss's frenzy meter, the pink bar underneath their health. You're going to need this in order to actually keep track of the boss's frenzy. Once it fills, they're going to go into their immunity phase and you have to be ready to know that especially in these fights especially with this build because you are going to need to try and do as much damage as possible in between these phases so get used to using this in all of your intercept fights so that you know exactly when bosses are going to frenzy and how far away they are as well as how far the gauge is overall progressed as you're fighting in addition all these boss fights are going to have one key thing in common you're going to want to bring their upper body weak points their shoulders and their core down to the yellow when you shoot at these weak points they start off kind of blue as they're getting hit then as they're getting close to becoming damaged they turn into like a lightish blue color and then when they're damaged and can be grappled that is when they're yellow you want to push them down to the yellow spot for this build for solo purposes just getting them down to yellow and waiting for the opportune moments to break them is important we'll go over that in each individual fight but i wanted to cover that as a whole initially because it applies to all of them let's go ahead and get directly into executioner's skills so with the executioner you're going to be dealing with a number of different attacks from this boss first off he's going to shoot you with his arm cannon just electrical bullets you just can try and strafe while you use uh your shoot from the hip that could dodge a couple of shots but you're still probably going to take a couple hits that's why we built for survivability uh, next up is the charged up orb he will charge up at you and shoot an orb that will shoot little lightning balls at you but just let it fall behind you it should be okay next he can charge up his uh his gun into like a laser and shoot it at you you can't really get away from this all that well except by distancing yourself but the distance you need to make on it is insanely long uh, i would not worry about it i would just take the damage from it it's not lethal you should be fine and the big the big thing that this boss will do is he will wind up his sword attack and swing it at you as he's winding up his sword just dodge to the left or right you're gonna take maybe a little bit of damage if you don't dodge quickly enough and 
you're just trying to avoid getting directly hit by the sword. Getting directly hit's gonna hurt the most, but even with that, you should be fine as long as you don't take it too many of these hits in succession. But as soon as you see his arm hold up for the sword, just dodge to the left or right, you should be fine. That's all of his primary attacks when he's in his normal state. Then he'll also will summon King Fishers, either on the floor, which you'll see he'll spawn them in front of you, or he'll spawn them in the air and they'll tether to him. With the ones tethered in the air, you need to destroy them as fast as possible. They are passively giving him frenzy meter. If you let them sit up there and keep just tethered to him, they are going to just give him frenzy meter for free. So you gotta take them down as quickly as possible so that the only frenzy that he's gaining is from you attacking him. Otherwise, you're gonna get a lot more immunity phases and it's gonna be a hell to actually beat this. So before we get into the immunity phase and you know and all that, there is one thing to keep note of. I told you before that you're going to bring his shoulders and his chest piece down to yellow. We covered this prior to the fight. You're gonna wanna do that, but you're not gonna wanna grapple onto them at all. You're gonna hold. The main reason we brought Absolute Curse for this fight is because this boss, at certain stages, is going to apply a defensive buff to himself. Be on the lookout. When he does like a little shimmy move and he'll shake his shoulders and he's you can see he won't be grappleable, you can't do it, he's going to then apply a green uh, a buff to himself. It has a green box with a shield in it underneath his health bar. Once you see that, grapple a shoulder and break it. Do that and it will remove that buff thanks to the Absolute Curse mod. If you do not have the Absolute Curse mod, you cannot remove the buff. You cannot deal with this boss easily, especially with this build. He's going to take way too little damage and you're not going to be able to beat it. So if you can cleanse the buff, the fight is fine. Once that's done, you're just going to keep damaging him until he builds up his frenzy and he's going to go into his immunity phase. Now he may do this after the immunity phase or before, so just be on the lookout for that buff. And that's why you're not going to break these pieces until he applies the buff. Once you're in the immunity phase, the boss only has a couple of things he's going to do. He's either going to shoot you with a fan laser. As long as you're staying a distance away from him, he shouldn't be able to clip you with a ton of the lasers. So you shouldn't take a ton of damage. He's also going to charge up his laser and shoot a beam at you. Just wait until the laser's charged up a second and just dodge roll to the left or right. If you dodge roll to the left, you can actually look up and shoot the weak point on his back. If you dodge to the right, can't. Um, so I would recommend dodging to the left. And at any point on either phase, he can do a thing where he'll jump in the air and he'll make the screen go white. They, Some of them can do that. Mostly it's the pyromaniac and the executioner. And then they're just going to sort of spawn you in the air. Just grapple to the floor in front of you get out of the blue circle on the ground before it finishes and he's just gonna land there and do damage if you're standing in the circle you take damage if not you're fine during this immunity phase i would highly recommend not worrying about dealing damage to the boss and just focus on clearing out all the kingfishers getting your ammo set up getting your hp back up with health orbs just prep yourself for the rest of the fight once he comes out just continue to do damage to him shoot his leg weak points anywhere but any of the weak points that are all already yellow do not do that to the chest or the shoulders that are already yellow until you need to get up there and break them and just only save those for when you need to get up there and you need to break off those pieces so that you can cleanse the buff do that and this boss is easy you just follow along with the attacks take as little damage as you can heal back up from what you get hit by and keep doing damage Make sure you only break the pieces when you need to cleanse the debuff. Or if you see a sign, that, or if you see like the light at the end of the tunnel and the boss is really low and you could just break a piece and get him for the, rest, the last bit of his damage. Once you get through that, that's it. It's pretty easy. Once you have all the right circumstances aligned, you will get him. You'll get him down and you'll get your rewards. So break the defensive buff, kill the executioner. Let's move on to the dead bride. Okay, so for dead bride... You're going to be encountering some different mechanics, and also Dead Bride is going to present you with an entirely new uh, issue regarding health. She is all shield, so when you're shooting her and you're seeing her health bar barely go down at all, that's fine. She is all shield. The second that shield is gone, she melts. So do not get disheartened when you see the shield barely going down. It's just a big shield. Let's talk about the attacks from Dead Bride. So she's going to do a couple of different things, like when she spreads her legs apart, she's going to go ahead and shoot missiles at you. If you go ahead and uh, hold your gun at your hip and shoot, you do hip shoot, don't don't aim, just hip shoot, and strafe to the left or right, 
you should be able to avoid a couple of these missiles, maybe getting hit by one or two as you're starting, and you should be able to take less damage overall from this while you continue to shoot her. So that's a good thing. Uh, the same can be done when she uses her arm cannon. She's going to be, like, moving around, shooting you with the slow arm cannon. She'll do, like, three, maybe four shots sometimes. Just, again, hip shoot and move. Strafe left and right. You will take less damage doing so. As well as when she kind of floats in the air, has the ice orb above her, and she's shooting icicles at you. Again, hip shoot, strafe left and right. If you're moving too far towards a uh, a wall or to a lava pit, just kind of go forward or back a little bit and turn, do a little loop. You might get clipped by one or two things, but you're going to take a lot less damage by moving around like this. And just keep moving. As long as you keep moving, you're going to take a lot less damage, and you're going to be able to continually damage her by shooting from the hip. If you're not able to shoot from the hip effectively, you can try and just um, use, especially for this ice orb one, Use a pillar or something to try to line the side a little bit. Take some of the hits off of you. Uh, but for the others, you are going to need to run from those and then shoot afterwards. Since this gun has a low magazine size, only 25 bullets, you can actually shoot and move away and then shoot again. Since you're not trying to get a continuous steady shot going with like a weapon like a machine gun that has to build up for a second, you can just blast as much as you can in one go and then move as soon as you see the boss starting to attack you. Um, the only other attacks that she might do to you before she gets to her immunity phase is she might stomp on you if you're really close to her. And if she is doing her orb phase where she's holding the orb above her, she will slam that thing down in an area around her once she's done, so just don't be that close to her when she does. And that's about all she really does. She does spawn kingfishers, so do be wary of those. They will knock you around and be general assholes. There's not really too much else for her non, for her outside of her immunity phase. When she goes into her immunity phase, her weak points are on her gun, on her, on the left side arm that you can see, our, uh, from our left. And they're just two tubes sticking out of either side. One of them's easier to hit because it's on the inside, but the outer side one is harder to hit because it barely ekes out behind her arm. So don't worry a ton about breaking that. Focus more on dodging any of the stuff she does while she's in immunity phase. So during the immunity phase, she's going to go ahead and Im immediately dash to a position, and then she's going to create an ice bubble around you. This will do damage over time to you if you're standing in it. So the second you start to see the white bubble appear, just start running. Run, grapple, get away, get out of it. Just get in a direction where there's the most room to run to. Run over there, get out of it. She will chase you afterwards. Take some time to, like, take out any of the kingfishers that get close, collect your HP and ammo, do that. She will go ahead and charge up her gun and shoot you with a laser. If you get clipped by this, you will be frozen. Just dodge it. Same as the others, just hold for a second, then dodge away. Um, that's about all she really does. She's just going to run at you, shoot some stuff that you've already seen before, and shoot lasers at you. There's not a ton. She will do another uh, orb phase. Uh, after the first one expires. So once the first one expires, get ready to run again. But then that's it. So after that, you just deal with the fight as usual. You don't need to worry so much about her um, her weak points. You can grapple them anytime and get as much damage when you need to. But just be wary if you grapple her and you drop her in the lava, like in the center, it's hard to get to a good place to stand without you know, taking a ton of damage and having good vantage points to shoot. Because uh, you're going to want to likely shoot her sh her shoulders to weaken them, her chest to weaken it, and then use those for grappling points. And then you have her weak spots on behind her legs. Uh, and then you also have the two on her head where her ears would be. So you have to be wary of all of that. With regards to positioning when you're gonna where you're going to drop her. If you drop her in the center, it's hard to find a good foothold with all that lava floor. Be wary of the lava floor. Do as much damage as you can. Avoid dying during the the immunity phases, and just keep pushing. That shield is big, but it's doable. You can beat it. Just burn her down, get her to the end, and claim your loot. We are now on the fight that is both the easiest in the game and the hardest in the game, simultaneously. And I'm not saying this, that this fight is hard, but if you are undergeared, this fight is near impossible. Because this fight is not about how much damage you can do, but how much damage you can do quick. When it comes to the Devourer, He's very, very made of paper. Like, he does take 
he goes down very quickly. The problem is that when he goes into his immunity phase, he spawns three healing orbs or like drones that are in bubbles. You can't shoot from outside the bubble. You have to get into the bubble. When you're in the bubble, you're going to get bombarded with stuff, and he's going to even try and step on you and slam you when you're in some bubbles. And that is problematic, especially when we're this undergeared. When we're this low on gear, we have to kill these as quickly as possible. If you're stronger, this is cake. This is a cakewalk. Even if you end up having to do the immunity phase, even if you can't one-shot devour, you could break these orbs in like a second and they're done. But for us, when we're this weak, it takes too long. So we have to be as quickly as possible breaking down every orb we can so he doesn't gain all of his health back. Essentially what we need to do is over like two or three immunity phases, we have to burn him down and break these orbs so quickly that he still loses HP in the long run. And then once he's low enough, we can burn him through in one clean phase. So you have to be very patient with Devourer. You're gonna wanna burn down his shoulders and his core, his chest piece, until they're in the yellow. But then you're gonna wanna save that for at least two immunity phases, maybe even three. You're gonna go ahead and damage him everywhere else and you're going to make sure that when his frenzy bar is nearly full, that you have full ammo and full life. If you die in his immunity phase, it's over. He's going to heal back up to full. You're going to be spawned all the way on the other side of the map from where he is. And by the time you get over there, he's back to full HP, full shields, and you still have to clear out all the orbs and then burn him some more. So if you do die, it's over. Reset. Reset. Try again. But only during the immunity phase. If you die during any other phase, it's fine. You're fine. You're fine. As long as it's not during the immunity phase. So what you're going to do is, like I said, you're going to burn the shoulders and the chest piece down to yellow. When he's in his immunity phase, you're going to wait and you're going to be mindful of your distance from the boss. Be about maybe 10, 15 feet away from him, meters away from him, whatever. And just be ready to go to the left or right of you, wherever you are, and look for an orb. As soon as they spawn, get to one of them quickly. You can either use any movement abilities you have or use your grappling. Grapple the floor in front of it so that you get to it. If you grapple the orb, it's going to go nowhere. Get inside the bubble and start shooting it as quickly as possible. Once you've shot it down, use your entire clip. You're going to want to use an ability as your reload bar is getting to about maybe like the 75%, 80% range on it. Once it's close to full, throw an ability. Anything you can do. Any additional damage you can do, get it. And then you empty your entire second clip, and by the time you get to the end of that clip, it should break. Then move on to the next one, quickly, as fast as possible. You need to break these things as quickly as possible to mitigate the amount of healing that he's getting. If you can continue to do this over two or three immunity phases, you can keep his HP, you can keep his HP into a range that you can you can deal with, especially if you break all of his pieces and put him on the floor multiple times. With that said, there's not a ton of other things that this boss does. You just need to really manage that and keep his weak points ready to to shoot at for that for those moments. The only thing the boss is really gonna do is he's gonna shoot at you. He's gonna shoot poison shots at you, he's gonna even shoot some bigger shots at you that will leave poison puddles on the ground. He will slam the ground and he will create a poison area. The best thing for you to do is to strafe to the left of the boss. Keep constantly strafing around him in a circle to the left. When he does do his swinging slam motion, he's going to do it with his right arm, so from your from the, your left side. You can just dodge roll away to the left and he will hit the ground and you shouldn't get knocked around or take any extra damage from it. Just get out of the poison puddle and continue to move around him. If you need to move a little bit further away to open up some space for you, do it. Um, be mindful of the roly polies. They're not as bad as the kingfishers because they take a little second to wind up before they hit you. But if you're not looking, then they'll go ahead and hit you anyway. Um, aside from that, the only other thing the boss will do is he will spawn a bunch of uh, poison orbs and he will like spin them around and shoot them in all directions. The second he spawns them, just get ready to grapple onto something high, or maybe just jump, uh, and then j double jump in the air to jump over them as they're going around. Main thing is just don't get clipped by too many. If you do get caught in poison, if you do get clipped by too many things, kill the king, kill the roly polies, get all of your health back as needed. Just make sure that you have enough health and ammo before the immunity phase comes so that you can deal with the healing drones. If you cannot do that, you are going to lose this fight quickly. And this fight is a war of attrition. 
You're burning him down, he's healing up. You're burning him down, he's healing up. You're burning him down, he's healing up. Don't be discouraged at all. This one is a little tough for this for this level of build, but it's doable. I've done it, you can do it too. You just need to be quick and decisive with the healing orbs. The second they spawn, start taking them down. The boss, be careful of wherever the boss is standing. If he's standing inside one, try to avoid that one unless it's right on top of you and you have to. Because that one, he's gonna stand in it, he's gonna put his foot inside the hitbox of the drone thing and you might clip the immune foot on the boss and not get any damage on the on the drone and you're just kind of have a bad time if you have bad luck on the first one it's fine you can still recover just make sure he doesn't get everything back you have enough time in the fight to be able to deal with four full immunity phases i've done it where he's gone immune four times and I've still completed the fight I, I've still done it just be careful and just do your best this fight is a little rough and if you're if you're struggling a lot and you want to go ahead and add your energy activator and get your damage up this fight becomes a lot easier because the drones die faster his health burns quicker it's a lot easier to manage but it is doable with this baseline uh limited build it's just hard and with that and with that you can clear the first three bosses congratulations well there you have it uh those three bosses are doable with this build you can you can defeat them. It's not going to be a cakewalk. It's not going to be that easy. And in some cases, like the Devourer, it's going to really come down to the wire and you got to play it a little safe. But this is a no investment. Like, you, have, you don't have to invest in almost anything for this build. No catalysts, no accelerators, nothing. It's doable with even a minimal setup like this. Pyromaniac and Swampwalker are are harder you're gonna need to ramp yourself up a little bit more to beat them but at least the first three bosses you can beat them with these and solo um and you can get start getting some rewards from those as needed and start uh, getting yourself stronger overall once you get to a point where you're farming out like your better weapons you're building up your descendants a little bit better you're gonna take these bosses down a lot faster a lot easier and utilizing what i've told you for these fights you can manage them easier and if you already have better weapon setups better descendant setups then you can make use of those to help you beat the boss easier i know that this may not be the most exciting content for for some because this is not necessarily like showcasing like big power but i felt like the this video i felt like i needed to make this just so that i could offer up alternatives for some people who are looking to break through the hard mode sort of like barrier there where they're kind of stuck so they can get into more of the game they can enjoy more aspects of the game and they could uh, start to have opportunities to build up the build up the descendants that they want and get themselves going better because i know that you can definitely get more energy activators and catalysts by running the dungeons and getting more amorphous materials, but you need to be able to beat these bosses to break them open. So I hope that this video at least helps somebody so that they can beat these bosses and have an easier time with it. Even if you don't necessarily need the build, uh, just the information regarding the fights should help some, some who are struggling. Uh, if there's any other types of like content that you're struggling with, um, let me know. I can try and either answer it in the comments or I can make a video explaining it, whichever is easier to do, I would say. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video or found this helpful at all, please consider liking and subscribing for more TFD content to come. And everyone get ready for season one hype coming out at the end of this month. Haley's coming. It's going to be a lot of fun. So with that said, uh, that'll be the end for this video. Thank you all for watching. Have a good one, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.